Now, put your lens back on your camera, if you would. Put your lens back on your camera. Go ahead and look through your camera, please. What I want you to do now is I want you to, with your lens, I want you to zoom in and zoom out. I want you to turn that zoom collar. Turn it with me, if you would, to the smallest number. On the lenses we're using, it's 18. Your lens, if you're using your own camera, might be something different. But whatever the smallest number is. On this, it's 18. And look through the camera lens. And now what I want you to do is turn it. As you're looking through the lens, turn that number to the largest number. On this lens, it's 55. And as you're looking through the lens, tell me what you notice happens. The subject. So if I'm pointing the camera at the clock on the wall way over there, as I look through the lens, as I go from 18 to 55, it makes the, the clock look like it's moving closer to me, or it's getting bigger. Does it? Okay. Well, at 55 it should. It should look a little bit different at 55, and I'll explain why in a moment. But certainly, as you adjusted focal length, as you moved the lens closer or farther away, it made the subject look closer or farther away. So going back to our image here, which of these two lenses has a longer focal length? The one on top or on the bottom? The bottom. Definitely, this is a really long focal length, right? If I was measuring focal length, remember again, focal length is the distance from the point to the lens. Here, the focal length would only be the distance from here to here. That's pretty short. But on this lens, because the focal point is way over here, it has a really long focal length. Let's say you were using these two lenses in a camera. Let's say you put this lens on your camera and you were looking through it, and then you switched it out and you used this lens. Do you think as you look through the camera, the subject would look the same? No. no. It would make the subject look what? Closer or farther apart, depending upon which lens you're using. All right, true or false? Very likely test question. True or false? The focal length of your lens has no effect on the apparent position of your subject in the photo. False. It has a major effect. As you're looking through the lens, what did you guys see? As you adjusted focal length, it made the subject look what? Larger or smaller or closer or farther away, right? In fact, this is the rule. This kind of helps demonstrate that. Which of these two lenses has the shorter focal length? So here's the subject, the statue. Light travels through the lens in the camera, and then Here's our focal length. So here's the focal point. Which one has the shorter focal length? The one on the top. This one has the longer focal length. What happens when we have a shorter focal length? Our subject's going to look what? Smaller. When we have a longer focal length, the subject's going to look bigger. Didn't you just see that as you look through the camera? Do it again. Put the camera up to your face. Put the camera up to your face. Use the shorter focal length. Again, on this camera, it's 18. As I look through the camera lens, the subject looks farther away and smaller. But then when I zoom in, as I bring the lens closer, sorry, farther away, other way around, said it wrong. As we use the short focal length where the lens is close, it makes the subject look far away. But as I zoom out, which is as I move the lens away from the recording medium, so I use a longer focal length, now the subject moves optically closer to me. Now it makes the subject look bigger and closer. So far, so good. All right. Everybody adjust your focal length to 18 for me, please. I want you to pick a subject that's a little bit farther. Away. So if you're in the front of the room, Point your camera towards the clock on the back wall. If you're in the back of the room, why don't you point your cameras up towards, let's say, the flag. Pick a subject that's a little bit farther away from you. Those of you guys in the middle, you can, you can choose whichever way you want. Okay, I want you to adjust your focal length, please, to 18 millimeters. The shortest one on your camera. Again, if you're using your own camera and it goes shorter than 18, that's fine. Whatever the shortest or lowest focal length is. Now what you're going to do, everybody look at me for a moment, I'm going to demonstrate and then you're going to do what I'm going to do. I want you, so I'm going to be looking at the, the clock on the wall there, I want you to look through the lens, don't you, look at me first so you can see what I'm going to do. 
Look through the lens at the subject, and then I want you to look at it with your naked eye. And then look through the, the lens, and then look at it with your naked eye. Do that a couple times, please, with the focal length at the shortest focal length. With me so far? Do that a couple times. What do you notice? When you look through the lens, it looks what? Farther away, actually, right? It, it doesn't quite look normal. It makes things look like they're farther away than they really are. It makes them look smaller than they really are. It also gives you a very wide angle. <coughs> Here's the definition. Go ahead, grab your notebook. We'll write this down. The definition of a short lens. Let's call this a working definition. You, you might find in your textbook another definition. But a working definition of a short lens is any lens that makes the subject look smaller and farther away than it really is. Short lenses make subjects look smaller and farther away than they really are. Which on these Nikon cameras, or if you have a Canon or whatever, at 18 millimeters, it should look smaller and farther away <coughs> than it really is. Now that could be really useful, by the way. What would it be useful? Let's say you're a realtor, and you're taking photos of an apartment that you want to rent, or a house that you want to sell. <coughs> you, ever, you ever get on Zillow before, and you're looking at a house, and you're like, man, all the rooms in these photos look gargantuan. And then you go show up at the open house, and that bedroom, which you thought was huge, was actually very, very small. How did the photographer give the illusion that the room was bigger than it really was? Well, they went in one corner of the room, and then what did they do with the lens? They zoomed out, meaning that they went to the smallest focal length. What does that do? It makes everything look farther away. So it makes that opposite wall look farther away. So it makes the room appear like it's actually bigger than it really is. Is that an accurate reflection of reality? No. no. What is your job as a police photographer? To take photos that are accurate. Is the spatial relationship of things in the crime scene an important detail? Yes. If you make objects look farther away than they really are, that's an issue. For example, one of the things that we look at in a crime scene is what's called ejection patterns. When a person fires a gun, oftentimes the cartridges, the cartridge cases rather, are ejected from the firearm, and they create a pattern on the floor. Well, when we take careful measurements of those ejection patterns, we can sometimes do things like figure out where the shooter was when they were firing. Well, if we take photos where it looks like the cartridge cases are spread out farther than they really are, it creates problems. In a suicide, a self-inflicted gunshot wound, a person takes a gun, maybe puts it under their chin, pulls the trigger, and, and shoots himself. If you show up at that crime scene, where do we expect to find the gun? It should be right there, in their lap, maybe even still in their hand, maybe on the floor. You know what I've never seen anybody do in a suicide? I've never seen anybody shoot themselves and then like, chuck the gun across the room, right? So if you take photos, I don't mean to make light of, of suicide, but what I'm trying to say is if you take photographs and the photo makes it look like the gun is way on the other side of the room because you zoomed out, you have created inaccuracy in your photos. You have made it seem like the gun is way far away, when in reality it might only be two or three feet away. So do you think we want to use short lenses a lot in crime scene photography? No. no. All right. Long lens. So if a short lens makes things look farther away and smaller than they really are, what do you think a long lens does? It does the opposite. It actually makes things look closer than they really are. It makes things look bigger than they really are. Think about when long lenses are used a lot. I use the example of the Super Bowl, right? At a sporting event, the photographers on the sidelines quite often use these big, long lenses. And the reason is they want to capture a photo of, of the action. The problem, though, is they don't let the, the photographers, I mean, they may be on the sidelines, but they're not on the field, right? They'd love to be, like, right on the field, running right next to Larry Fitzgerald as he's here and down the field, right? 
but they can't. They have to be 50 yards away. So how do I take that photo and capture the detail of him catching that awesome pass? I have to zoom in. I have to use a long lens that optically brings the action right in front of me. It makes it look like it's happening right in front of me, when in reality it's 50 yards that way. To do that, we would use a long lens. Long lens make things look closer and bigger than they really are. Do they? So it's pers then they are controlling perspective, yeah. is that right? And they want to make him seem like he's taller than he really is. They, they do the same thing with talk crews, too. <laughs> All right. Coming from another short man, it was important to us, right? <laughs> Only 5'7". All right, so long lenses. Now, do you think we use long lenses in crime scene photography very often? Yeah. No, because we don't want to make things look bigger than they really are. We don't want to make things look closer than no, they really no, are. We want to make things look what? Accurate. We want to make things look normal. So what is a normal lens? A normal lens is a lens that makes things look normal. It's the standard lens. On most digital cameras, the normal or standard lens is 35 millimeters. Okay. In the live scene, would you take, um, what about this? Uh, I will, I'll move close with the camera, but I'm not going to. I'm not necessarily going to zoom in with the lens. I will literally move closer physically, not necessarily zoom in optically. Because I'm going to talk about it in a moment. When you start zooming in and zooming out, you're going to create in your photographs what we call spatial distortion. We talked about spatial distortion already. If you zoom out, if you use a short focal length, things look farther away than they really are. That's a spatial distortion. You've distorted the way things look. You made things look farther away than they really are. Gabe, you had a question? Yeah, is the normal or standard lens in the scenes? No, it, it, it's, it's, when we talk about a normal lens, we're really talking about a focal length. It doesn't have to be a fixed focus lens. When SLR cameras were first made, there was no such thing really as a zoom lens. They were all fixed focus lenses. So normally when you bought a, an SLR camera, let's say you bought an SLR camera in the 60s or the 70s, the lens that came with your camera normally was a fixed focal length, meaning you couldn't adjust, you could focus it, but you couldn't zoom it. And on a 35 millimeter camera, it was 50 millimeters. On a digital camera, the standard lens, or what we call the normal lens, is usually around 35 millimeters. Now, you can buy, for your digital camera, a lens that's not a zoom lens. So what is the definition of zoom lens, by the way? It's any lens that I can adjust the focal length. Not all lenses do that. Some lenses, I can focus them, but I can't zoom them. We would call that a fixed focal length lens. Zoom lenses have only been around for about 40 years. Before that, if I wanted to zoom in, the way I would zoom in is I'd literally take the lens off and put another lens on. If I wanted to zoom in on the action, make it look closer, I'd have to take my 50 millimeter lens off and put a 300 millimeter lens on. Nowadays, we have zoom lenses so that I can, if I need to move closer to the action optically, I simply adjust the lens rather than taking the lens off and putting another one on. What is the standard or normal lens focal length on digital cameras? It's around 35 millimeters. It can vary, though, depending upon your camera. Really, it varies depending upon the size of your sensor. By definition, technically, the size of the standard or normal lens is equal to the diagonal measurement of your sensor. Now, when you buy a television, so let's say you buy like a 56 inch TV, right? So a TV, right, they're usually rectangular, correct? When we talk about a 56 inch TV, we don't mean it's 56 inches wide. We mean from corner to corner it's 56 inches. When we talk about a standard lens, we're talking about a lens. Remember, focal length is as the light travels through the lens. Remember, focal length is the distance from the lens to the focal point. A standard lens 
is one where the focal length equals the diagonal measurement. Most of the digital cameras today, if you take them apart, if you were to look at that little sensor inside the camera, most of them, if you measure from corner to corner, are about 35 millimeters, about an inch and a half. If, however, on your camera you have a bigger sensor, and some do, the standard focal length would actually be a little bit bigger. So on some cameras, your standard or normal focal length might actually be 50. It depends on your camera. Typical for most digital cameras is 35. When in doubt, you can find it. If you look in the manual of your camera, your camera's uh, operator's manual, it'll tell you. All right, so long lens, short lens, zoom, or sorry, standard or normal lens. So a zoom lens is simply one that I can adjust focal length. Look at the lens on this camera, please. Every you grab your camera, let's look at the lens. We're almost done for tonight, folks. What are the numbers on this lens? What's the smallest one? 18. What's the largest one? 55. Again, if you're using your own camera, it might be different, but pretty. this is pretty standard, by the way, for most lenses that come equipped with a camera when you buy it. Actually, it doesn't matter if it's Canon or Nikon. It might be slightly different. Maybe it might go from 15 to 60, but pretty normal. 18 to 55 is pretty normal. What is the standard or normal focal length for this camera? 35, which means if you adjust it to 35 and you were to take a photo, the photo would look like what your eye would be seeing. It would look normal. Can you adjust this focal length down to 18? The answer is yes. If you adjust this lens to 18, it becomes a what? Short lens. So by going to 35, this is a standard lens. By adjusting to 18, it's a short lens. If you adjust all the way up to 55, it becomes a long lens. And by definition, simply because you're able to actually adjust the focal length, it is therefore a zoom lens. So in terms of the four lens types, this one is technically what? All four. Which is why it's so versatile. Which is why when you typically buy a digital camera like this Nikon, this is the lens that comes equipped with it because it is so versatile. It's actually a short lens, a standard for normal lens, and a long lens at the same time because you can adjust it. Now, are all zoom lenses short lenses? No. Um, for example, do you have your kit with you, uh, uh, Joanna? Do you have your long? Oh, you don't have it with you. Do you have a longer lens with them? Could, do you mind taking it off for a second? Awesome. Thank you, buddy. I got it. So here is an example of a zoom lens. This is also a zoom lens. This is a Nikon lens. But this one goes from 55 to 200, which means it's always a long lens. It's either kind of long or it is really, really super long, right? If you were to take photos with this lens, and I'm sure it takes great photos, but we would not use this lens to take crime scene photos because it would, like, it would make all the things in the photos look what? Thank you, buddy. Too close and too big. Does that make sense? In crime scene photography, what lens do we use most of the time? the normal or standard lens. Make sense? Okay, I have one more thing to show you. Uh, so hold on one sec.